If a person actually was sent to this world, if God put us on this earth for luxuries and enjoyment of life, and taking pleasure in different, you know, luxuries of life, and eat food, and all the sorts of different things, Hashem mm-hmm. would not have given us a neshama. We would all be horses. A horse is not so... A horse enjoys life. A cow enjoys life. In a pasture, they find their grass. They don't have a neshama. They have a nefesh bahamit. They have an animalistic soul. What is the animalistic soul? We also have that particle in us. But we have one above it. A neshama. A neshama is the only thing that a human being has. A Jew has a neshama. And a neshama is something that the animals don't have. The animals enjoy eating, sleeping, marital relations. That's all they do. They don't have a purpose. There's no other purpose. You're not going to require your dog to become a better person. You know? Dogs get training. Cats get training. Does that make them a better dog? Intrinsically? No. They were just trained to sit and roll because they offered them cookies every time they did. Human beings are not like that. We can change from inside. That's our neshama. We can grow from inside. That's our neshama. So the Masilat Shem beautifully says, so condensed, if Hashem want, what had put us on this earth for pleasures and, and, and luxuries, He wouldn't have given us a neshama. There's no need for a neshama. That's why there's so much, in today's world, there's so much suicide, there's so much sadness. Because Why? Because a human being requires more than just fun. More than pleasure. We require it. You have the richest people in the world, sad, on pills. Why? Because you're constantly looking for like, what is it? What else? What else is there? What am I supposed to be doing? These are the questions that everybody has. Like, why am I still not happy? I don't understand. I thought when I get here, I'll be happy, but I'm not. Maybe it's the next step. It's the next step. It's the next step. But they realize very, very, very quickly that it's actually not it. You know, go ask Bill Gates. How much of his money goes to charity? Do you guys know how much of his money goes to charity? What? You know, after he dies? No, 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 now. 100%. He gives a very high percentage to charity. Why? Why? Makes it, he's a giver, yes, but believe me, it makes him so happy. You think it's easy for a person that has a lot of money to give a lot of money? Not at all. The more you have, the more you want. We talked about this. It's a hunger that just keeps on becoming more and more severe. Right? But he's realized the secret. I've asked this from people that are wealthy. Personally, I've asked them. And one person actually told me. So you understand? I found the secret to happiness. People think I'm doing them a favor. If only they knew how happy it makes me. I almost feel selfish. That's what he told me. He said, I almost feel selfish. Because I, I, I really feel like I'm doing this for me. That's the beauty of it. So he says... The neshama is a part of Hashem. And it does not take pleasure in anything of this world. Nothing in this world gives the neshama pleasure. Nothing. Not food, not exercise, not, not, not candy, not alcohol, not relations. Nothing gives the neshama pleasure. Nothing. It only needs those, as we said in the halachot. It only needs that, not for itself. The suit needs repair. The body needs those in order for the neshama to stay within. Therefore, we have to eat. We need to do these things in order to maintain the body fully in order for the neshama to keep going. But does the neshama need these things? Not at all. Do non-Jews have neshama? Later. Ask later, please. Sheken ba... Okay, listen. So he says, he brings a, a mashal. He brings the mashal and he says it's, it's comparable to a daughter of a, of, of a king that got married to a regular villager. Right? 
in the home of the villager, what can this villager give the daughter of the king to make her happy? What can he offer her that she has not had in her life? Nothing. Nothing that this villager can offer the princess could make her happy. Because the, whatever he can offer, she's had hundred times better in the palace. Our neshama is that princess. It's that prince. Nothing we can offer the neshama from this world makes the neshama happy. Except ruchniyut, spirituality. That's what makes our neshama happy. That's why we said right now, nothing brings happiness more than really under, from within. Understanding a gemara that was difficult and you break your head over it. Really understanding a, 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 a novel idea in the Torah. Why does it make us so giggly inside? You know what that is? That's the neshama. That's the feeling of, ah, I feel fulfilled. I feel like I just did something. That's what the neshama needs. That's its food. So he brings a story from the Chavetz Chaim. That there were two friends. <clears throat> and they grew up together. From a young age, these two friends grew up together. But they chose two different paths. One of the friends became, you know, in the way of Torah and mitzvot and taking charge of his spiritual life, becoming Tamil Chacham, but living a very, you know, regular life, mediocre life. The other one took a life of, you know, business and entrepreneurship and like making it out in the world and therefore because of that, he then decided that, you know, in order to make it big, you got to break some legs, you got to break some heads. So he left this part of Torah, he left that part of his religion, and little by little, he just had nothing to do with religion anymore. So it just so happened that the Talmud Chacham felt bad for his friend, the wealthy friend. Like, ah, miskin. You know, he's such a good guy, but he's losing God on life. Right? It's just money, money, money. And then his rich friend felt bad for him. Like, you know, it's like, I don't believe it. Like, you know, he's such a smart guy. Look at the way he lives. You know, he just to chose living a life of, you know, uh, poverty because he wants to be religious and he wants to keep Shabbat. and Mardis. So the rich guy comes to the Chafetz Chaim. And he asks the Chafetz Chaim, he tells the Chafetz Chaim about his problem. He says, listen, I really feel bad for my friend. You know, is, this is the way it's supposed to be in life? Like, I feel bad, like, I, I feel like this guy has it bad because he chose Torah. <laughs> so the Chavetz Chaim says to him, I want to give you an example. You tell me, I'll give you a scenario, you tell me what you think. Okay? He says, you have, you want to go to, you want to go somewhere. And a chariot, there's a chariot that's going that way, a cabbie. Right? And this cabbie, uh, it's an old cabbie, old chariot, the wheels are rusted, they make a lot of noise, you know, they haven't been oiled for a while, and it costs $50 to go to the destination. He says, okay. He says, then you have another cabbie. Now this one's a Cadillac. You know, all like souped up, <laughs> inside, uh, you got free Wi-Fi, you got everything you need. You got free Wi-Fi in the car. You got, you got uh, what else? The spinning hubcaps. You know, <laughs> spinners. <laughs> you remember that? I remember <laughs> spinners. Uh, uh, what else? You know, you got TVs behind every seat. It's like a lounge back there. You know, leg room, and it only costs what? Fifteen dollars. And it's not even Uber Pool. It's regular. <laughs> right? It costs $15. So you got $50 with a chariot, not even oiled. Now you got a caddy costing you 15 bucks. However, it's not going your destination. It's going the opposite way. Which one would you take? He says, of course, I would pay the $50. If I'm going... That direction, that's my destination. I'll pay the extra money to go to my destination. Even if it makes noise and it's bumpy, but that's where I'm going. 
says the Chafetz Chaim says exactly. Just because you have luxury does not mean you're on the right route and going towards your destination. You might be going backwards, but you're going there comfortably. So comfortable, you don't even know you're going the wrong way. But after 120 years, your buddy over there, he's going to reach his destination. Where are you going? Where are you headed? Where's all the luxury taking you? It's unbelievable. Like we don't realize. We don't realize so many times in our lives when we want so many things in our lives, we don't take a moment and think, let me think for a second. Is this thing that I want, is it parallel to the purpose of my life? Is it directed towards my goals? Or is it going the other way? That's what we have to think. Which ride are we going to take? Baruch Amen.